Revive me! Security system disabled. Come on, shitbag, what are you doing? <laughs> Soldier. Welcome to Adobe Cinema Tutorials. All right, man, we're back here with a nice tutorial. This is going to be another special effects tutorial. So it's going to be another intermediate tutorial. And you need to know a lot about Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere. All right. Those are two programs we're going to be working with today. But what we're going to do is work with this flare transition. As you saw in the beginning clip when I was doing the 1v1 battles, I added the flare transition that I actually created just for this tutorial. So it's a brand new flare transition. And what you'll be doing in Adobe Premiere is the animation part. We're going from left to right. And in Adobe Photoshop, you're gonna be setting up the image. It will be two images you'll be working with. As you can see right there, I had both images open. The first image, will be the flares on top of each other. So you're gonna get a bunch of flare images and put them on top of each other. And the size of this will be, I think 3000 by 720. 720 is the height. So you don't wanna change that. The only thing you're gonna change is the width. So you will go and open up a new project and you would change the width to 3000 and leave the height at 720. As you can see, I move pretty fast. I open up uh, my new project. I set up my new layers, my black background. I'm ready to rock. I'm gonna go and grab my optical flares and I'm gonna drag it into Adobe Photoshop. All right, so as you can see, we have all of the optical flare layers and each layer is set on the screen mode. So they blend into each other. It takes away the black, like I told you in the last tutorial. I set this up. That's not just one flare. That's like three or four images. As I showed you before how to set up the flares, you pull it in, you duplicate the image and the top one you overlay into the bottom one. And then you hit control E to merge them together and then you drag it over. It's pretty simple. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be doing it like it's nothing. Screen mode takes away the black. As you can see, that's nice and smooth and you put it wherever you want. So I have at least three or four optical flares going from left to right to build that image. And then you save it. Once you save it, then what you would do is bring that image back into Photoshop. So I saved that image. I brought it back in and now this is my new template. This would be the second image you will work with. Okay, with this image, you would just set up your folders like so. And you have the white overlay effect. 
and you have the white middle effect. Okay. Okay. So right here, what I did was I used the pen tool to actually make this nice little shape here. And then I blurred it out as you will see it. See, nice. And I'll show you a little bit of blur. Then a lot of blur. I'm gonna show you how to do this with the pen tool really quick. You can make any shape. I wasn't trying to be perfect. I just made any shape really quick and I would just blur it out. I actually tried to recreate the one that I did, but I just couldn't do it. I don't know why. I guess I was just too sleepy or something, but I just made a nice little shape right here. Just remember, once you close that selection with the pen tool, you're gonna right click on the image and then you're going to make the selection and then you can fill it with whatever color you want. I filled it with white. And then you go to filter, blur, gloss and blur. And there you go. Now I'm going to show you the same thing with the white overlay effect. Okay. See? Overlay effect. The overlay blending mode. That's the shape I came up with. It looks a little lopsided, but what I did was I chopped one side off and then I flipped it, as you will see. See? The pen tool. Right click. Make selection. Boom. Okay, you're going to delete that side of it. Okay, you select and then you're going to blur this out. Okay. And then you would duplicate that layer. And then you're going to flip it. Okay, and then you drag it over. And then you overlay it. I could do color dodge also, but the color dodge didn't give me the effect that I actually wanted. All right. It's pretty nice. And then you just export this image out and then you have both of them. You have the one with the big white in the middle. And then you have the one that's just the regular flares. You take them, you drag them in to Adobe Premiere Pro. And then from there, you're going to take those images and you're going to drag it onto the tracks. You drag it on video track two or three or whatever. Just don't drag it on video track one. That track I leave free for when I want to copy and paste stuff. As you can see, this is a still image. What you can do with a still image is drag the length out. You can drag it all the way across the track or you can make it shorter. And you can do this with the video tracks also. Say if you make a slice in one of your video tracks and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I made a mistake. Well, then you can go right back to that video track and just drag it out and the video will be brand new again. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from left to right with this optical flare. The way you do this is you're going to click on the actual image. Okay. Okay, so you're going to click on the actual image and then you're going to go up to the motion properties and the position. You're going to click that keyframe at the very beginning of that image. You click that keyframe and it'll know at that position, that's where you want the image to start. 
as you can see, I'm dragging the image over because I actually want the beginning of that image to be all the way to the left. You see the width? The width is pretty long, so. I actually copied and paste from my past settings to speed this up. All right, so then what you do is you move the scrubber over a little bit and then you change the destination of the flare. So you want it to be all the way on the right hand side. Just like that. You want it to go across the screen. I'm going to paste the settings that I have already done. And there you go, you see? So it's going from left to right. Now, up here with these keyframes is how you control the timing of this movement, of this animation. If, it's if the keyframes are close together, it'll be very fast. If you spread it apart, it'll move a lot slower. And remember, it's on you to figure out the timing that you want for your transitions. You see, that was a lot slower. So basically what you're going to be doing is going from left to right with your flare transition image. And the way you do this is by setting up your keyframes and changing the position of the image. So as you can see, I changed the position of the image to start off the screen. Then I changed the position to go off the screen all the way to the right. So starting off the screen on the left and then going off the screen all the way to the right. And by using the keyframes, you can change the actual speed of the transition of how it goes from left to right. One keyframe would be at the beginning of the image and then one keyframe would be somewhere down the road. Just move the scrubber over a little bit and set another keyframe or actually just change the position and then make a keyframe for you. All right, right here is going to be the tail end of this transition. What happens is you will grab the very first image that we worked on in Adobe Photoshop. That image does not have the white middle. You would take that image, put it on the next video track, and then you will move the image over towards the end of it. That's the tail end part of this transition. You will do the same animation moving from left to right, but starting at the end of the image. And then what you would do from there is you would change the keyframes to make the timing slow down. So it's like a tail end effect and you will make it fade out. And as it fades, it'll look like a nice tail end of a transition. See, you make it fade. So as it's moving from left to right, it's fading out. And you would do this on multiple layers. I did it on two different video tracks. You can do it on three or four, however you want it. Okay, now we're gonna work with the audio effects. You're gonna go and get your sound effects, drag it in. After you drag it into Adobe Premiere Pro, you're gonna take that sound effect and you're gonna drag it onto an audio track. Now, what you're trying to do here is match up the audio with the transition. And you can use the slide tool to do this. What you're trying to do here is match up the audio waves. See the waveform down there? You want to match up the waveform with the big white in the middle of the transition. Because when the big white comes through, that's when you want the big swoosh sound or whatever you make. I don't know. You might do some lightning. I don't know. Whatever. So you line it up. You can use the slide tool. And the slide tool makes it easier to move the audio track. Okay. And what you do after that is you're going to set up 
two sound effects if you would like or you can set up one I chose to do two and with my two sound effects what I did was I had one fade in from the left and one fade out from the right to give that impression that the transition is moving from left to right this is a real good a real good tip that I'm giving y'all right now So it's not only seeing the visuals, actually hearing it and actually believing it. So you, what you would do is you would use the pan tool in the audio mixer template window. You would use the pan tool on the tracks to pan it left or pan it right. You can also um, use automation, but I didn't feel like doing that. This right here is really, really quick for me. Okay, right here, we're looking at that white bar. Do you see the white bar that I'm moving? That bar lets you know what's being exported out. Whatever is with inside of the width of that white bar will be exported out. Anything on the outside will not be exported out. Just remember when you save your full project to put that bar back to the original position it was at. I'm just saving this transition so I could pull it right back in to Adobe Premiere. Once you pull it back into Adobe Premiere, the transition will be on a black background. So when you put it on the track that's above all the video footage, remember to go and change it to the screen mode to take the black away. When you're lining up a transition, okay, you wanna line up your transition at the slice in the video footage, at the split in the video footage. So you want the white to come in right at the tip and then to whoosh right across the screen and wipe the video out. 